wide web. Welcome back to Hanging With. I'm GW Palmetry. Thanks for staying logged on and tuned in. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. We are back, and right now we are hanging with author Dan Wells of the latest title, Blue Screen. And so, hey, thanks, Dan, for hanging with us, man. Hey, thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to be here. No, that's very cool. How's the con going for you so far? This is great. This is, I do eight or nine Comic Cons a year. This is absolutely one of my favorite ones to come this to. This is fantastic. There's, they're, all over, they're all over town, not just all over the building. They're mm -hmm. all over town. I've never, this is the only place I come where the airport itself is decorated for Comic Con. That's it's fantastic, great. isn't it? <laughs> it is really, really good. So let's talk a little bit about Blue Screen. Yeah. We started um, in... Uh, Give us the, kind of the book blurb on this. Yeah, Blue Screen is my newest book. It just came out on Tuesday. Okay. And it is the start of a new series. It is Cyberpunk, cool. which is very near future. It takes place in 2050. It's about a group of teenage girls who are semi-pro video gamers. And uh, in the world of 2050, everyone has a computer installed in their brain called a genie. And that's how everyone is online constantly. You want to call your friend, you just think about it, and you're connected. And... Uh, one of these girls, one night, introduces the others to a new drug called Blue Screen that you plug into your head, and it overloads it with data, gives you a big buzz, and then basically crashes your brain to desktop. And that's called Blue Screen. And uh, it's supposed to be no side effects, you know, because it's not physical, it's purely digital, but, you know. The book's named after it, so you can imagine something, yeah, go from there. something goes wrong. Uh, and, and that's available right now. That is available right now, although, as of about five minutes ago, we sold the very last copy in all of Pensacola, so it's selling out. That is fantastic. So if you want one, you got to grab it well, right now. Well, congratulations to that. <laughs> uh, if, you're, if you're looking for it online, go get it. If you're in Pensacola, go online and get it, uh, because that's it. They're done. They're here. You sold the last copy. Um, here, how's it been? Down, how's, how's it being received downstairs? Obviously, you sold the last copy. So yeah, really yeah, people good. are, are people are liking there. it. We've been selling it a lot, um, but you know, just because we sold out here at the con doesn't mean that it's gone everywhere. So, so people can still find store. it if they if they look hard. That is great. Um, now, as you got started writing, uh, we have big news about your first book. Yes. We're going to do, but before we do that, we're going to find out real quick when you first started writing, um, how you got started and talk a little bit about you know, where your writing comes from. Well, I started writing, I actually told my parents in second grade that I was gonna be an author. You know, and they kind of smiled and nodded and said, okay, that's great, what are you gonna do until that works? Uh, um, and so they were always very certain, you know, very, they, they made certain that I knew that I needed to, to be able to pay my bills instead of just be a starving author somewhere. Uh, so I, you know, worked as a writer at various in, in companies. In grade, I told my parents I was going to be an astronaut. <laughs> so I think they're the ones who encouraged me to become a writer. <laughs> well, okay, I guess it is a little more in, bar, you know, in terms of, of achievability and feasibility. <laughs> there is a scale. Um, but I just love words. I love words. I love to play with words. And so from a young age, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And so that's, you know, I've always, as I worked on what I considered to be more practical careers, I always had writing in the back of my head. And finally in college, I took a creative writing class and the teacher was uh, Dave Wolverton, who's pretty well known for science fiction and fantasy. And he was teaching one semester there and he came in on the very first day and set down his backpack and said, you can make a living as an artist. And no one had ever told me that before. And, and that really changed everything for me. And, and so I started to, you know, really put in the time and the effort and thought, if I'm going to do this, I need to treat it like a job. And even though, I, even if it doesn't pay me anything for nine, ten years, and it in, in fact, it only took me five failed books and eight years before book number six finally sold and, and I was able to go full time on it. So That's fantastic. That is, really is. Now, uh, we understand there's big news on your first book. Mm -hmm. Your first book, I Am Not a Serial Killer. Yes. It's about to be made into a movie. Yes, in fact, it has just that we've finished the movie and it debuts wow. next month at the South by Southwest Film Festival. Fantastic, man. What was that like? It was amazing. Um, and you haven't even heard the coolest part yet. So uh, the, the main character is a 15 year old boy. Okay. And he's being played by Max Records, who, if you've seen the, the live action Where the Wild Things Are, okay. he's that kid. Wow. But he's, you know, 15, 17 years old now. Uh, the other main character is the uh, presumably kindly old neighbor across the street, and he's being played by Christopher Lloyd. Oh, 
Wow. And he was just fantastic. Uh, oh, we filmed this, we started filming last year in March, so it's been almost a full year. I got to spend about 10 days on set and got to meet everyone and get to know them. And uh, Chris is really like, you know, when you watch him in a movie like Back to the Future and you think, I bet I could hang out with him and we'd be really good friends, you totally could be because he's the nicest guy. He's an absolute like smart aleck and crack jokes and made fun of people and he was just really cool and so good in the movie too. So I'm really wow. excited. Well, that, that is amazing news. Um, any ongoing projects that you're working on right now? Uh, well, I am just now getting, I'm in the process of starting book six in that same series about the, you know, I'm not a serial killer, and just working on that. The other big thing, um, I do a podcast for aspiring writers, and it's awesome. me and three other authors, and we've been doing this for about eight years now, and we have just started over the last couple of years hosting our own writing conference. And uh, what we realized after doing it in a cabin in Tennessee the first two years is that without having to raise the price to you, the attendee, uh, we can do the exact same writing conference on a cruise in the Caribbean. So, if you guys are interested in coming on our cool writing excuses is cool. retreat, it's on a cruise ship, and it's a week long. We've got really cool authors coming in to be guest instructors. That is awesome. And, uh, that is awesome. When is that happening? Uh, that is going to be in September. The podcast is called Writing Excuses. Uh, you can look it up, writingexcuses.com. Um, the... Uh, Retreat, I don't remember the exact cost of the retreat, but that's all on the website. And the podcast itself is 15 to 20 minutes a week and absolutely free, just for anyone awesome. who so wants to be a writer. Out, writingexcuses.com. Mm -hmm. Check out that podcast, especially young, aspiring writers. Check that out. Uh, go back. I imagine there's several. Uh, yeah, we've been doing it, like I said, for eight years. It's all online. A couple years ago, we won a Hugo for it. Awesome. So it's a, it's a really good show. That is great. Great. Check that out, everybody out there. Um, and and you know, if you want to know uh, about writing and, and how you can make a living writing exactly. and become a, a, a proficient writer, then uh, check that out, writingexcuses.com. And now we'd, we'd like to have a little fun. This is hanging. Okay. It's casual. It's let's just let's do it. talking, all right? So the girls put together some questions that, that I'm going to just read. And if I sound really silly, it's their fault. And if I sound really good... I picked that question. Okay, okay. Okay, we, we, we're agree on that. okay great. So, uh, we want to know. So, uh, you know, you're a regular guy. You have friends to hang out with. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, who are you most likely to be arrested with? To be arrested with? Yes, yes. who's going to be with you when you're When I'm arrested. Yeah. Man, I don't even know. Um, Whoever it is, it's probably also going to be another author because that's who I tend to hang out with. So, I'm trying to decide <laughs> who would be the best one to be arrested we with. We together. We're like fish. We work in schools. <laughs> writing, school, see, and never mind. Forget the joke. It's really bad. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is this is actually, this is behind the camera. This is her favorite question. Okay. Okay. So you are stuck on a desert island, and you can only mm -hmm. have one item that you can bring with you. What is it? One item. One item. Oh, man. See, I never know how to answer these because I'm like, should it be a thing that'll light fires so I don't starve to death on the island? Or should it be like a really cool something yeah, else? Yeah. You know, like a well, solar-powered iPhone. I was going to say, the writer in you is like, my laptop. I need a laptop. <laughs> well, yeah, I well, need to be able to write even, something. Laptop, but then I'll starve to death. Yeah. So, so I don't know. Honestly, if I'm just going to, to assume, you know, here I am on this desert island. I'm going to be here forever. I don't have to bother about like you know a satellite phone that'll just let me escape. Escape. <laughs> um, I'll just accept my lot in life. I get to live on a desert island for the rest of time. And yeah, honestly, it is going to be something solar powered, so I don't run out of batteries yeah. for it. That'll let me write. That's your Wilson. That'll let your me Wilson. write and read, all alone on an island for the. the, the I'm actually. I'm totally sold on this. Where's the island? Can yeah, we go I, there I, now? I'm, yeah, uh, I'm trying to book it now. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, the problem is, is there's a lot of artists here. Which means they that all the want to go. Filling up fast, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about all the time we have. Uh, so we have been here hanging with Dan Wells, the author of Blue Screen, uh, which you can find right now, and uh, coming to film festivals and I'm sure online venues very, very soon is uh, going to be 
his first film adaptation of, of his first book. Yes, I Am Not a Serial Killer. I Am Not a Serial Killer is coming somewhere where you can watch it really soon after it makes the, I'm sure, the festival circuit. Okay. Well, the, you know, the business model of an indie film is take it to the festival and impress somebody with money. And then so you can get it if all goes well, you know, we get distributed to theaters in 2017. Yeah, we'll see that, how it goes. That will be Fingers awesome. crossed. Uh, until then, uh, again, we've been hanging with Dan Wells. Please stay logged on. Please stay tuned in. Keep hanging with us and these terrific creators and discover who your new favorite might be. We'll be right back with Hanging With.